Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave us your only Son to take on our human nature and to, to illumine the world with your light. 
By your grace, adopt us as your children and enlighten us with your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. The reading this Christmas morning is from the book of Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together, they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, ye ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Please stand. <laughs> So, before my sermon, I just have to share, like, the greatest Christmas gift that a deacon could ever get a pastor, and it's a Christian joke book for pastors. Should I apologize to the congregation? Well, let's, let's hear the joke first. It, there's, there's, it's a whole book. I'm just going to do this one because it was appropriate for Christmas. What did Adam say when he was asked his favorite holiday? It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> okay, get used to these. Get used to these. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tanya. Yes, thank, thank you, Lee. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Well, you have seen this phrase uh, probably on a bumper sticker, uh, perhaps on Facebook, maybe a yard sign. Keep Christ in Christmas. You've seen this, we've heard this, maybe we've said it, and oh my goodness, this time of year, I get it. Uh, I don't know if you've seen those, those things on social media that say, be nice to retail workers, be, be nice to those, uh, what did we call them during the pandemic? Um, 
essential workers, thank you. Um, and, and, and really, friends of mine that work in these industries, people are not nice this time of year because of all of the high stress. And I think this notion of, of keep Christ in Christmas, if we were to do that, would look like sharing love a lot more. But there's this other part of keep Christ in Christmas, which, which kind of irks me. And you're like, what, Pastor? You're, you're a pastor. You're supposed to keep Jesus in everything. Yes. Uh, if there was a bumper sticker that said, keep Jesus in everything, I would, I would have that on my car. But keep Christ in Christmas, there's this notion that with that that somehow we as Christians need to conquer the culture with Jesus, right? That, that some, somehow God needs defending um, in confirmation, we're, we're using this book called Manna and Mercy, and our growing faith students have used this book as well. And there's this thing in Manna and Mercy, it tells the story of the Bible where people want a king, and it doesn't work out. So then they want a new king, and that doesn't work out, and then they want a new king, and surprise, it doesn't work out. And then God says, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send prophets to, to tell you how maybe things could be going if you stop relying on kings. And then they don't listen to the prophets, and they say they want a king, and that doesn't work out either. And that's just the story of the Bible over and over and over. And we still do this today, where we have this desire to kind of conquer culture with, with Christ. But God does something different. God comes as a baby. And I think if God wanted to conquer the world, then God would have just come as a king with armies and hosts of angels and just do that. <laughs> But I think God wants to conquer our hearts. Keep Christ in Christmas. Okay, well, we'll hold on to that. I think God wants to conquer our hearts. And I think that's just because babies are just so darn cute. I mean, if God wanted to really conquer the world, he would have come with horses and chariots. But God wanted to conquer our hearts, so God came as a baby to win us over. Christ is only half of that word Christmas, so. The other half of that word, we don't use this word a lot here in the Lutheran church, but it's mass. Christ's mass. And the word, I know we, we, we say we celebrate Holy Communion, but the word mass at its root, um, if you say it in Spanish, it's misa from the Latin for mission. We come to worship to be fed for God to conquer our hearts and to be filled with mission. When we come to this table, it's, it's God conquering our hearts that we might live and serve others. So I might suggest for us today, although we don't use the word much, but keep mass in Christmas. It's this gift, this day of, of Jesus' birth, when we receive the Lord God in this bodily way, this incarnate way where God shows up to us and not only enters our lives, but our very bodies so that we can live as beloved children of God. I commend you all for being here today. I said to the 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock service that not many people would brave nine degree weather and come to church in the middle of the night, but you all did. And I'll say the same thing to you. Not everyone would brave cold weather on a cold Christmas morning, but to receive this gift of Christmas in a very real way that we can eat and drink of the gift of God so that God might conquer our hearts that's the word taking flesh in each of us. So let us sing and enter it into a time of shared communion with one another and with our God. Please stand as you are able.
thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald their coming, O oh God. We give thanks for poets, musicians, and hymn writers who give voice to, your, to our praise. And for all who lead the church's worship, God of grace, hear our prayer. This day dawns a new hope for all living things. And from ocean depths to mountain peaks, the earth rejoices, inspiring us an urgent zeal to protect the planet and renew its resources. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. Bring heavenly peace to this world and an end to our conflict. Rise up leaders in every nation who will honor human rights and establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the perilous. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. Guard the lives of many in danger, especially those who work to protect others. Lead any who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, health, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bless all who gather to worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations and watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food camps that give generously to people in need. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, we have beheld your glory, full of grace and truth. We give thanks for those in every generation who reflect the light of Christ. May their witness shine forth in our time. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Jesus Christ, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us share God's peace with one another. Please be seated as we enter into this time of musical offering uh, and prepare for this meal. <laughs>
scriptures have been proclaimed and as the meal is shared, grant us to see and know the presence of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Together let us sing in 283.
thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. Please be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Can I give you a blessing? Oh, if you love This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Together, let us pray. Redeemer, you have met us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine to the good news of your glory. Glory to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grant you grace and truth in the spirits and peace upon your hearts, now and forever. Amen.